Welcome to the Courting Happiness Podcast. This is a space where self-care becomes part of your day. A space where you learn evidence-based strategies to help your life, share it with those you love, and cultivate well-being at work. I'm your host, Dr. Courtney Alston. I'm a former news director, television reporter turned happiness scholar, TEDx speaker, and transformational trainer. I also understand hardships. While working my dream job in television, I lived a nightmare suddenly becoming a young widow after 86 days of marriage. Marriage. I became committed to learning more about resilience, healing, and happiness. This is how I discovered my area of research, which is positive psychology. Now I'm living my calling of training individuals and organizations on happiness. And my new chapter begins with being happily engaged. The courting and courting happiness is about a true courtship. I like to say commitment with happiness. The K in courting stands for the vulnerability of sharing my story, inspirational interviews with phenomenal people, the infusion fusion of positive psychology, and so much more. You'll learn how to commit to your well-being one episode at a time. I hope you subscribe and share. So, are you ready? Let's get started. Welcome to episode 103. I'm Dr. Courtney Alston. I'm so happy that you're here, and I'm really happy that I can actually talk with you today. After my podcast last week, you probably know that I had surgery because my podcast last week was hosted by my fiance, Ken Lemon. And so he shared that I had surgery and and also shared a status report of how I was doing. And I'm doing so much better um, from, of course, the initial surgery. And um, because after surgery, I was in so much pain and extremely tired from medication. And I, I wanted to talk about kind of elements of that. And um, and so for the past two years, um, uh, you know, I've uh, I actually, we're embarking on a two year anniversary of this podcast. And, um, and so I will share that I will have a podcast episode talking about some of the health issues that I've had and why I had the surgery and why the surgery was so important. Um, but I'm going to share that when I'm on the other side of recovery and, um, I'm looking forward to sharing that information with each and every one of you. Um, but it's interesting because I am embarking on our two year anniversary of this podcast. I started it two years ago, um, in September, uh, (laughs) in late September, And normally I would release a podcast episode for the past two years. I've done it, you know, every Thursday you have a podcast episode. Well, today is Friday and I'm recording the episode and I will upload it as soon as I uh, finish um, editing this piece. So it would actually um, be live on a Friday opposed to a Thursday. And, And partly because yesterday dealing with, you know, even though I'm feeling much better, but still dealing with levels of the surgery, I was so tired and I just wasn't able to, to, um, to work on the podcast yesterday. And today is a new day. And I think it's also important to share how it's important to honor your feelings. And so Forbes published a, a, a great article with the headline, Be Real About How You Feel, and it's written by Mike Robbins. And the article provides so much insight into honoring how we feel. He says, honoring our emotions isn't about being self-absorbed or arrogant. It's really about being true to ourselves, honest with how we feel and willing to engage in an authentic conversation with other people, even as especially when we don't feel or want the same things that they do. So it's interesting that he says that because yesterday I go, oh gosh, I need to upload my podcast episode. And then I thought to myself, you know what? You are not feeling well. You're dealing with, you know, still recovering. I'm in recovery, um, still in recovery as it relates to my surgery. And, and then I thought, you know, this is an important conversation 
to have. And, and I'm so glad I'm being able to have that conversation with you because I think this is a topic that, you know, when we all think about ourselves and our feelings and, and we, you know, we, we live in a world, sometimes we're like, oh no, just, just go and, and just push through it, right? But I think it's important to honor our feelings. And so what I love so much about this article and, and, and really um, a comment, a statement that Robbins is making is that he says, a question I've often asked myself is, what would it be like to honor my real emotions and to live my life from a deeper place of authenticity? However, it can be hard to honor our emotions and even harder to share how we truly feel with others. So some of the primary reasons for this are we worry that people won't like or approve of us, right? We don't value ourselves in an authentic way. We've been taught to put our put other people's needs, desires, and feelings ahead of our own. Does that sound familiar to you? Or we're not comfortable feeling and expressing certain emotions. We don't think we deserve to have what we want. We think we're not important enough. We haven't been taught healthy ways to feel and express our true emotions. And another he mentions that we worry, we worry that we've been judged as selfish or overly emotional. So Mike Robbins says, sadly, by not honoring our feelings, right? It's, it's, it, it puts us in a painful and ultimately a damaging way. And we create a separation between us and other people when we live, oh, well, I'm sorry, those we live with, work with, and those who are important to us. So I'm here to share the importance of sharing your feelings. I often say honoring your feelings. And Robbins mentions giving yourself permission to feel. I often say this, give yourself permission to be human. You know, when we give ourselves permission to be human, we realize that we're imperfectly perfect, <laughs> right? Imperfectly perfect, right? I, I I used to be all this, all, all about perfectionism. Then I realized, I'm like, no, imperfection is great <laughs> sometimes. Imperfection is wonderful learning dynamic. So I love this. When we give ourselves permission to be human, we realize that we're imperfectly perfect and we are empathetic towards other sufferings, to other people and their sufferings. And we practice compassion with the understanding that it starts with us. It starts with you. It starts with me. And I say this as a new department chair. So I, I don't know if I've shared this in, in the recent podcast episode, but I started a new job at a new university. I'm a new department chair. Um, and I simply just treasure, I treasure my new position. I treasure my new university. I treasure my department, I treasure all the elements of, of, uh, of my new university. And I love how compassionate the culture is. And I love how, when I began to share that I needed surgery, and the next thing that was shared out of, out of countless people, countless people on campus, from my department to administration to, um, to all levels, students, I'm praying for you, Dr. Alston. I'm praying for you. I will mention that my new university is a private, private liberal arts college. And also in regards to the fact that it's a private Christian liberal arts college. And I love, I love that so many people shared that they'll be praying for me. The beauty of that statement is that I'm praying for you holds so much compassion it's important that we focus on honoring ourselves, our pain, our suffering, 
and as we practice self-compassion. But as a new department chair, I truly believe that because I practice self-compassion, it allows me to be more compassionate with the world, with my department, more compassionate with students, more compassionate with my university and community because I practice self-compassion. When we honor our feelings, we honor ourselves. And I also like to think we honor others. So it can be challenging, right? It can be challenging to do this because when we think of, I don't know how people may perceive us or we may think it's a sign of weakness. You know, I will say this, as a happiness scholar, I consider it such a great strength. Anytime we bring to light and make visible something that society has made invisible is courageous. So last week, when my fiance says to me, baby, let me host your podcast so you can focus on your healing. The old Courtney would have said, no, no, I can do it. I mean, come on, I can do it. I can do it. This Courtney, Dr. Courtney, a person who's been drawn to positive psychology because of having a greater understanding of well-being, said this, yes, yes. And I will also add this, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful that he asked me that. I'm grateful that I said yes. I'm grateful that I have a phenomenal fiance that's so supportive. I'm grateful for the community that surrounds me that has been extremely supportive. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. I'm grateful for friends, for my amazing friends who have been so supportive. I'm so grateful for my mentors, my mentors like Dr. Julie Dodd, who sent me a text, <laughs> sent me a message while I was the day of my surgery. And I looked down and I almost was in tears because of the fact of how so many people who I shared it in passing or shared it weeks ago or months ago, remember the date. Remember the day. And I'm so grateful that I honored my feelings in sharing it with them. Because the old Courtney would have probably said, Hey, yeah, no, I don't really need to go into that. I'm having surgery. I mean, I mean, why would I need to do that? Why would I need to even share that? The new Courtney goes, It's a part of you. Why wouldn't you share it? Why wouldn't you share it with people that you care for who care for you? So today, I hope you honor your feelings. I hope you practice self-compassion. I hope you speak kindly to yourself every step of the way. And remember, your well-being is your most important job. And I'm always here to help. Thank you for listening. Let's continue this conversation online. Email us at podcast at drcourtneyalston.com. That's podcast at D-R-K-O-R-T-N-I-A-L-S-T-O-N dot com. Join us on Instagram at Courting Happiness. Don't forget that's courting with a K. Also, I hope you join our private Facebook community. You can find us at Courting Happiness podcast community. Our private Facebook group is a safe haven to share, meet more people looking to build positive relationships, focus on well-being, and create a happier life. Now, are you ready to spread happiness? We hope you subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, co-workers, and all the important people in your world. We release a new episode every Thursday. Congratulations on your continued commitment to your courting happiness journey. Thank you so much for listening. We want you to be well, be happier, and be kinder to yourself. We can't wait to see you next week.